Hello, the practitioner here again, continuing from part one. Other examples of what could go wrong in our society. For one thing, in part two of the Richard Dawkins video, uh, in, in, in the second of those uh, two part videos, um, that is a, 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 a video by Richard Dawkins called Breaking the Science Barrier. And what it is, is ta he's talking about the, uh, the overall lack of public understanding of science. And um, in there, he shows a, po a particular case, uh, and this is only just one of hundreds of examples of this, um, of where um, science, uh, where the wrong doctors, the wrong experts of a particular scientific field, were brought in to examine the corpse of, to do an autopsy on a young girl who had died of a uh, of a brain uh, of a brain uh, tumor. Uh, anyway, uh, this guy got fought, wrongfully convicted, um, thanks to a uh, the guy got wrongfully convicted um, as a result. Uh, and was for, sentenced to life imprisonment for murdering a girl when in reality he didn't and he later got released when a brain pathologist when a uh, when a um, when a specialist in brain injuries actually retook a look at the case and a new expert and a new set of lawyers who had a better understanding of the of the science got in there have been thousands or millions of there have been thousands of people over this course of the past, of the several decades probably hundreds of thousands of people over the course of several decades who have been arrested on uh, on uh, on false charges or based on inadequate science couple of examples. One of the very first ones uh, that happened in Canada just before um, DNA testing got in. A guy was, conv was convicted of rape. Uh, a, a guy was convicted of rape of a woman um, based on a blood stain that was found at the, um, based on a blood, on a, um, based on a blood stain that was found at the, uh, apparently, you know, blood of, uh, supposedly his, um, at the, at the murder scene. Uh, apparently, you know, supposedly the, the perpetrator had been cut and uh, they did a blood test and they, um, I should mention that back during the time when he got convicted, um, what they were doing at the time was they were doing something called blood type testing. For those of you who don't know, there are, ty there are eight types of blood in the body. A, B, A positive, B positive, O positive, A, B negative, A negative, B negative, and there's a couple of others. But anyway, basically there's these eight types of blood. And um, what they used to do was that only at, when they first discovered blood types, they, uh, it was originally used in paternity testing. And um, ironically, that's another case which I'll get to in a minute. But um, in this particular case, this guy's blood, um, this guy, the guy who they convicted of the crime, um, of, of the rape, was actually of the same blood type as the blood found at the scene. But when, DNA, but when forensic DNA uh, testing was, later, was discovered in Britain and later came over to North America, the same evidence was later retested on the guy's appeal. Turned out he was the same blood type as the perpetrator, but not the same DNA base. He got let off scot-free. Here's another example. Blood type testing... Um, although uh, not as good as DNA testing, was still very effective uh, for testing uh, paternity of uh, children. Charlie Chaplin, the uh, great actor of the 1930s, the great silent actor, was once sued by one of his ex-wives for a son that they had. He said that it was not his son, he would take a blood type test to prove it. He did, and he was not the same blood type as his son, thus proving that he was not the father. Uh, again, the um, all that it is is that you might you might be the father with blood type, but if you are not the same blood type as your child, you are definitely not the father. Again, uh, the uh, the reason being is that there's not you know it's not a it's not a matter of you know inheriting the blood type from one parent or the other. It's often a mix of blood types. So anyway, here's the thing. He took that. Do you know what the California state did? They just, the California court, the prosecution just simply said, well, let's just throw these newfangled blood type testing aside. Like this newfangled technology is not that good. Now look at this poor girl, and look at this evil monster. Who are you going to believe? And based on, can, ba, based on character slandering, based on character slandering and completely dismissing of DNA evidence, which actually set a precedent in the California court system not to uh, uh, you know, take blood type testing for anything for the better part of three, four decades, the uh, Charlie Chaplin was, convict, uh, was, um, was found liable in civil court for being the father of, uh, of this child, and he was forced to pay child support for a child that was not even his. You know, I mean, this is another example. Here's another one. There are a whole bunch of cases that have come up in Texas uh, since the, uh, the death penalty pushed through in the, uh, uh, since Bush came to office, you know, and his whole new, uh, uh, you know, pushing for, uh, you know, pushing for further tightening of death penalty and the like. There was one, uh, one particular case, which was in the news about six years ago, um, a, or was it five years ago now? About five years ago now, a guy, uh, um, a guy was, con uh, a guy was, uh, was the DNA evidence was supposedly brought on him. He uh, was brought, he was brought to trial, but they didn't even check for independent DNA evidence, and there was, you know, uh, suspicion that the DNA uh, evidence in particular might have been marred. But you know what? 
The, de the prosecution came up on their case for it. The defense lawyer who had been provided by the government was not specializing in criminal law and had completely slept the entire way through it. Had completely slept through the entire way through the prosecution's case. He didn't do anything on the DNA evidence, and as a result, this guy got convicted and is now on death row facing a life, uh, facing, you know, death penalty in 10 years. Here's another one. In Canada, uh, just about two years ago, a guy was about to be convicted of murder. Um, you know, and he was this close to getting convicted when some new evidence came out to light. The guy was convicted, uh, the, the guy was being charged with first degree murder. There was DNA evidence at the scene, which had, per which had linked him to the, uh, to the, uh, which had linked him to the, uh, to the crime, and they basically, uh, branded him as the perp. He was about to be convicted when he, uh, when new evidence came up that the guy who had been doing the DNA testing had falsified his resume to get the job and didn't even know how to do a DNA test. As a result, the entire evidence of the prosecution's case was marred, the guy got let off scot-free. But just in the nick of time, had it been, uh, you know, had it been like two minutes later, he would have been found guilty and would have been uh, sentenced to life imprisonment in Canada. His reputation would have been smeared. This is a sort of miscarriage of justice, and this is just in the institutional settings. You want to take a look at some of the other instances of where uh, science is misinterpreted. Look at the instances of the government side uh, dealing with global warming. Um, the American government still hasn't done a thing on it, um, and as of neither the Canadian or the uh, or other governments. I mean, they do this half-hearted thing about carbon tax credits, but they don't do anything about taking a look at adaption of the technology. They don't take a look at uh, at other practical means of trying to remove uh, CO2. They just provide carbon tax credits, and none of the corporations either. Uh, you know, it's not really an incentive for um, for BC Hydro or for other you know or for the hydro companies or for anybody to uh, really um, you know for the power companies to really change anything. All it does is it just, you know, puts a half measure in place to the point where they're going to do like, okay, I suppose we can do some research into installing solar panels or windmills or tide-based currents, which luckily BC, to its credit, has been doing. We're one of the four leaders in Canada on this one. But some of the other, but some of the other provinces, they don't do it. They just simply continue on as business as usual, you know, due to the lack of understanding of the actual science pertaining to global warming. For further data on that, go see my video, Global Warming, and look at the science behind it. And that's just the institutional looks. Now for, the, uh, now for the problems of what would happen if we didn't have science in the first place. If we didn't have science in the first place, we would still probably be living in a hunter-gatherer or a ba very basic agrarian society. Here's a couple of, uh, of little-known facts for you. Columbus actually got to sail and figured out the world was round based on a dif discovery by an early Greek proto-philosopher slash proto-scientist who, uh, who used an astrolabe and calculated the angle of the sun's momentum, and then from that was able to calculate the, uh, you know, by the distance it moved, was able to calculate that the Earth was round, and was able to calculate off by about a couple of hundred me, uh, off by about a couple of hundred miles, the uh, circumference of the Earth. Um, um, what happened was, um, unfortunately, that a large chunk of that information was lost or kept in the church. Columbus, however, uh, was only able to get that the world was round. And he didn't know about, the, and so the thing is, he thought that he'd just be able to keep uh, sailing straight and hit Asia. He didn't know about North America. Nobody did. So, you know, that, he couldn't be faulted for that. But the point is, if he hadn't done that, if he thought the world was flat, he would not have sailed. And he wouldn't have been able to get that information about the world being round if it hadn't been for that Greek proto-philosopher. The bulk of you, um, here's another example. Roman technology. The Romans figured out portable plumbing, a very basic format, based on some uh, engineering by proto-philosophers. Again, from Greek systems. The Greeks had a really, really good basis in philosophy, logic, and science. They were able to construct city-states and other, uh, you know, really advanced weaponry based on this. And some of that basis later became the basis for how the Roman Empire was able to uh, maintain its technological height. And some of it uh, later got rediscovered. Uh, la uh, some of it uh, getting discovered uh, later on um, became uh, some of the basis for uh, became some of the starting points for modern-day science. Uh, if anything. Uh, for a basis of a, of a theory um, which was outdated and could be fought against. Besides, I also want to, uh, um, you know, anyway, um, you know, uh, here's another thing. Um, the, the Egyptians had uh, really great astronomy, um, you know, great mechanical capabilities with building pyramids. They even had a Leyden jar. There, was actually, uh, there were actually reports of uh, them actually having had primitive uh, batteries um, using a uh, uh, mixture of honey and vinegar. Uh, inside a uh, earthenware clat, um, inside an earthenware, um, uh, you know, pottery uh, pottery flask. They, uh, you know, uh, the Mayans had an incredible uh, solar calendar, uh, which they were able to use to predict uh, their agricultural system, and thus they were able to spread out as a as a great empire over their local area. I mean, these are the benefits of science. You know, um, germ theory uh, allowed us to quell all the diseases. More in the next video.
and I'll explain what happened uh, with science, etc.